Hey everybody, I'm BC and welcome to Nomads, a weekly series where I'm going to be showcasing some of the creative and unique builds that our community has to offer. I will be going to the Steam Workshop time to time and checking out the builds and see if anything uh, piques my interest, whether it be a base build or a rover or flyer or even something completely out of the box. And if, you watch my, if you've watched my, any of my videos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, for those that are not with Steam, I will include download links in the description for the builds and instructions on how to install them. Uh, if there's something you would like to suggest or a build that you'd like to see on Nomads, uh, please email me a screenshot in the description to pnnomads at yahoo.com and I will get back to you. Uh, so the first I pl first theme I have for this week, I guess it will be a week theme, I recorded this bit like eight times already, that's what happens when you don't record for two weeks, uh, but yeah, I decided to go with big ships, and I went with this idea because of one of the builds I saw when Blueprinting first came out, uh, we won't get to that one first, a couple other sh ideas we're going to look at first, and go from there, and if I didn't mention it, uh, I'm going to build these in creative, and just load up the terminal and survival to go over how many resources it is to actually build it just to save time and resourcing and I really don't want to grind out a hundred thousand frames every week anyways the first build for today is the juggernaut BB XV-3 by bipolar bear uh, excuse I apologize for the thumbnail I've had to turn my graphics aids all the way down for this series especially that intro you just saw but there's a brief description here to cherry in your it's a dual-powered ship that cruises 40 kilometers an hour. Uh, it's got basically everything it needs, and we'll do a bit of a tour of that. as a long description here, but I got it all summed up in a list, and we'll go explore it. It's uh, basically it's a mobile base with plenty of storage, and he's got a couple of nice little ideas we'll check out. But there we go. This is what we need to make it. We need 4,500 frames, 4,500 plates, 150 electrical electronic parts. 410 mechanical parts, 32 quantum electronic parts, uh, and so on and so forth. I'll let you pause that and read that. And the build time, I believe, was 5 minutes and 13 seconds. But for me, it's going to take 5 seconds. And there it is. Uh, when I first built it, I thought it was an actual boat. I put it in the water, and it uh, didn't really float too well. But there it is, really artistic design, a lot of attention to detail, like using the, the small armor slopes as vents around the fans, or the air plates, I'm sorry, even on the sides. Uh, he does have sort of landing gear, the wheels are not powered, so they're not functional, they're not the, the cheaty kind of wheels, but really nice attention to detail, like trying to get uh, the area, the contours on the outside of the ship, he's even got a couple little patios on here. And then what I really liked was uh, the blue and yellow up here, how he's got the entrance to the ship and the cockpit itself on the same angled plane, sort of. So that was a really interesting idea. But let's go ahead and have a look at it. This is the rear engine, of course. He's got, what does he have? Uh, he's got, I think he has six large air blades and 28 small air blades on this particular design. I really like how people are going like with the blocks and trying to get the shapes and... I seem to notice more attention to detail like this since the colors came out because now you can actually see the definition even like this little awning around the around the door that's really nice but let's go in and take a look so we head down here and I uh, just got a little bit of decoration around here it does have small small greenhouse couple of stasis chambers he's got four lockers really like the idea of using the solar beacon powered off as a stand for the terminal that's a really added touch and then yeah we got so we got two balconies one on either side as you can see it's just a place to step out head on down here we head down to the main room where all the equipment is and it is a fully functioning setup it does have two water pumps down below so as long as you're actually submerged in the water partially you go ahead and turn this blue switch on and it engages the water pumps and as you can see it does have everything it has a food and drink machine or yeah, food and drink machine, armory, and all that stuff. Uh, because I'm in creative, I can actually open the inventories. But uh, yeah, he does have all set up. He's got these four by four or four sets of four small containers, which are not connected to the system. But you can just place a container, uh, T connector here to connect connect them into the system. And he's got this idea too, which is a uh, little was a 
six packs, six pack containers, which is actually switchable. Turn the hover pad on and it actually connects it into the main system. So that's a really good idea. I like that. And then you go, uh, this is the, the uranium generator here. Put a little bottom on it to give it sort of some definition. The deuterium generator is there, but I don't think it's actually being used in this particular setup. Oh, it is. My bad. And then we'll go downstairs and, uh, I guess there's no downstairs. Yeah, I haven't been here too much. And then this is the, the back area. He does have a an escape hatch out the bottom. And go from there. And it is flyable. Uh, once I get up to the cockpit here. And it does travel at a good, fair enough speed. So, good job by Polar Bear. This is a really great design. It's uh, certainly a lot better than my first hover hover base but anyways so that is the juggernaut bb xv-3 the next one is the mothership by tang x69 this is a big ship this is has a lot of color to it and they had some issues with it, as you can see bugs and like and uh, i'm warning you there is some going to be some flashing lights so if you can't if you have epilepsy or whatever please look away uh, but anyways, so we got, uh, there's a part count there, 8,800 frames, 9,200 plates, 1,000 mechanical parts, and then uh, a little handful of this and that, and it takes a total of 7 and almost 8 minutes to build. And they have put a lot of detail into this build, I gotta say. I, the, amount of, the use of the small blocks to get all the definition around the ship is amazing. And as you can tell by all the different colors, there's a lot of lights, and unfortunately, I can't go inside. I tried to go in the front door there, and uh, the f physics just didn't like it, and things went wrong, and it was a hard crash, and and all that. But I wanted to showcase this anyways, just because like the, uh, the imaginations of people, the creativity they have, the things they come up with, like this is just incredible. And even though that they didn't use any colored blocks at all, that everything was white. This was actually a really good job, and I like it. Even the detail on uh, the cockpit there, really good. They uh, had some bay doors in the back here, which open up with winches. Uh, there is room for it to hold two vehicles in there, from what they say, whether it be flyers or rovers. Uh, there is a lot of lights, that's all I can say. Uh, another one they did too, I was able to load this up earlier, uh, not today, but uh, what they did is they set up a spinner inside to sort of get like a, a main engine drive going in there, which I thought was a pretty pretty neat idea. Uh, it is r really flashy in there. <laughs> That's all I could say. Uh, it will crash my computer if I try to go any closer to it. Um, I have my graphic settings down as low as possible, and uh, I... I would recommend turning everything down if you want to try to load this up. I have a pretty good system as is, but because I'm recording at the same time too, this could have it could have something to do with it. But this is Tang X69's mothership. Uh, definitely want to check out. Like I said before, the link will be in the description if you want to check it out. You can also find it on the Steam Workshop. And the last one is the Tanker by YM Rich. Uh, build time 11 a little over 11 minutes as you can see it is a very big build very detailed and it is a full-size tanker it is not detailed inside because of lag issues but it has 58 containers supported by 112 floating bases it does move an extreme amount of leg and i will not attempt to pilot it just because of frame rate issues but there you go 21,000 frames 21,000 plating and a whole bunch of other stuff. The block count on this is currently just under 18,000, which is actually more than my helicarrier. Five seconds to build, two minutes to load. This is the tanker. And you can see why this caught my attention. These are the kind of builds that I, I personally would like to do, but the amount of time that it takes to do this, like, I don't know how much time they spent doing this job, this tanker, but good job the attention to detail on this one is just absolutely amazing i like how they kept the the stairs and the platforms and the railings and all the bare frames for you know for that proper look and uh, having all the containers connected up with the pipes is great and got these 
little boom cranes here, which are a nice touch. And then even uh, around the, the control house here, like just incredible job. I mean, like the old attention to detail and even like the little lifeboats, which is actually where you control it. You know, like how to use the shackles for the ladders and all that stuff. We can go inside. Uh, there isn't too much to see in here really because they were getting uh, frame rate issues as they were building so they had uh, sort of put a stop to it but yeah a full size what's down here it's supposed to be an elevator of so sorts I guess oh yes down to the makeshift generator the engine room uh, there we go this is definitely a big build and the as you can see, I'm not exactly getting the best of frame rate, and that's even with my graphics all the way down. But yeah, it just goes to show you can do just about anything in this game. And I am, you know, I a round of applause to why I'm rich. And uh, don't forget too, like I said, you will find all these builds in the Steam Workshop, so you'll be able to check them out for yourself and give your computer the ultimate test on a build like this and the mothership. And there we have it. Three great builds that just show you the limitless possibilities that there is, that there is in Planet Nomads. What you want to build is entirely up to you. You're not stuck to doing whatever whatever they tell you to. No cookie cutter cookie cutter builds. Think outside the box. You build what you want to build. But anyways, I'm gonna call this episode here. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to swing by Steam. Give these guys a uh, rate these guys up, subscribe to their builds, and test them up with the machines. And remember, if you're with Garnet Games, there is download links in the description. And feel free to email me at pnnomads at yahoo.com if you'd like to submit something. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Happy nomading.